Hey guys, uh, I was asked to quickly come up with a tutorial on how I blend pole shapes and uh, forms together. So sort of the way the saucer here blends into the primary hull and into these little guys and, you know, into the torpedo launchers and stuff. And you can see from the topology that it's probably not as complex as you might imagine. Um, so I'm going to give a quick demo of that by just basically blending together a... Uh, uh, a sphere and a cube. So here's our sphere. Here's our cube. Let's kind of make that intersection a little bit more interesting. Uh, and then I'm going to assume that the shapes that you're blending together aren't hard edged like that. So we're going to do a bit of a chamfer on them for about a meter width. And there you go, some subdivisions. And there you go. So let's blend these two guys together. So the way I go about this is I duplicate both objects and then I push them out by the width I want the, the blend to be, which in this case is, again, about a meter. So there we go. Then I go in and I grab the first object, go to Compound Objects, Pro Boolean, set it to Subtraction Cookie, and subtract the larger of these two. Then I repeat the process with the other one. So Pro Boolean... Subtraction cookie, grab the larger one. So now you can see there's a, a gap between the two that's the width of about, about a meter, um, give or take. And uh, so now I just go in here and convert these all to uh, the, a single editable poly. And if you look here, you can see there's some, some sort of gibberish here. Uh, the ways I go about cleaning that up is bools are by their very nature, at least in this version of Mac, is not very well cleaned once you're done with them. So the first thing I do is I weld to a very small number, like 0.1 of a meter, and then I, um, I use this script called Vertex Cleaner right here, which will remove anything within a certain threshold, which I usually set to like two degrees or thereabouts. And uh, sometimes it's a little overzealous like it gets rid of these guys and we don't want it to like those are fairly important but things like that actually this looks pretty good just as is so i might not do that all right so the next step and this is this is going to be important for the all the other steps going forward is select everybody and do a bevel now we're not actually going to this isn't the bevel that we're actually putting between the objects oh, auto save this is simply to add a little bit of a rim of coplanar geometry that's in a strip. So I, again, do about 0.1 of a meter and hit OK. And now we have this strip between the two that we can, we can build off of. So if I go in here and select both open edges and go to Bridge, you can see we already have something that's vaguely workable. But we're going to want to uh, change the whoop, routing on this so it's a little bit more even. And then we can add in some additional subdivisions. Now the next step is to just give this a point, negative 0.25 inward bend, which does that. So. You can already see we have the basics of it done. You can tell, though, that the, the normals and stuff, while mostly there, are not perfectly smooth. Uh, and there's a way to get around that. So uh, first thing, we're going to make sure that we're working with what we see, grab everybody, make sure it's, you know, being smoothed at the same smoothing group. And then you can go in and uh, select these edges like this and then select every other one, and then set the flow on those edges. And then do the same with the alternate ones. And that works in most cases to help smooth it out. Um, and then you can go in and add additional edges where needed. Uh, Anywhere that it collapses to just like a point like that, you want to go in and add an extra edge. 
just to give it give it something more to work with. And then we'll just clean up those those edges here in a second, the extra ones. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Do, 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 and let's go this way. I could use extra curvature. And then you should just be able to do geometry, quadrify, selection, well, or geometry, quadrify, all. And it should ditch those additional uh, unneeded diagonals. Which in most cases will just work right off, but you know, obviously a little bit of cleanup required here. All right, there they go. Now they're gone. Now you can more easily go in and select these guys and do the, uh, the every other trick and do a set. And that's already cleaned up quite significantly. Ooh, looks like I missed one. Grab those, every other set. Grab these. Every other set. There we go. You can see it started to do quite a nice blend between these two. Now, there's some areas here where you just got to connect this edge over here. It just doesn't have enough knowledge of what's going on there to accurately blend those together. So we can just weld these guys here. Oh, there's another one. Just give it a diagonal to give it a little bit more geometry to work with. And the blend will be pretty much done. Um, now to, to give it even more, uh, blend these guys in. All right, yeah, to give it even more, um, Fidelity, you can go in and uh, add edge loops to these places here. Grab those new edge loops and again, hit set. And you just get a nicer and nicer blend. So you grab these guys and then do every other one, hit blend or hit set and you can see it gets progressively and progressively better. And then at the end of it, you've got a fairly nice blend between all those guys. Now you're seeing some weirdness along here. You can fix that by grabbing this inner edge here and then setting flow along that. And that should resolve most of that. You can also fix some of that by selecting everybody and hitting retriangulate. And Max is pretty good about figuring out where everything needs to go at that point except when it's not in these two few small areas. But there you go. We just quickly blended those two shapes together. Without a whole lot of muss or fuss. I mean, there's a few, like I said, there's a few areas that just need supporting edges. You can just quickly draw those on. Just to give it a little bit more knowledge of what the shape is for the shading. And there you go. Uh, and then you can do cool stuff like Say you want to have a panel line or something along that. You could add another edge in there. Grab that. And then I like to do an extrude of, uh, I don't know, 0.01. So very, well, yeah, very narrow. And then an inset of point. Uh, or point minus point 0.1. There we go. Oh wait, I'm, I'm reversing these, sorry. Minus 0.1 and then 0 0.01, there we go. And then you just hit okay, and then you split those edges. Then you can apply a smooth, an auto smooth to this, and then a chamfer modifier. You set the width of the chamfer to, I don't know, 0 0.04 is a good width for this sort of thing. Give it some more segments. Smooth to the chamfers only, adjacent, give it a big old number, and then, yeah, you got a nice panel line there. And it looks like there's some nonsense going on over here. Ah, the auto smooth is detecting that these guys are 
angles. So that should fix it. Yeah. Oop. It's not ha it doesn't have enough curvature down here to support that that level of auto smooth. So we can just add a few more supporting edges here. And just hit set a couple of times. Again, just giving it a little bit more to work with. There you go. And that should that should resolve. Now we have that chamfer turned on. Yeah, there you go. So there you go. Uh, and now you have the added benefit of it's really easy to select and add more panel lines on these guys because these guys are now separate pieces because you split the edges between the two. Um, that's should make it easy to do things like say, oh, grab this guy, uh, do a quick slice angled edge, grab that edge, do the same extruded chamfer thing, hit split, and now you've got another panel line there. It looks like there might be just a little bit of oddness down here, probably because they were too close, yeah. So that just edge is just too close, you can just delete it, and then it will have uh, enough room to do the chamfer modifier nice and smoothly, cleanly. So there you go. That's how I do my uh, my panel lines and everything along with, I don't know, this is also probably a similar problem. I think that'll... Yeah, just got to get those guys gone. Hmm some point it oh, I don't want that one hmm. oh I see what's going on here we just gotta nuke that Now it should work. Yeah, there you go. Much better. So there you go. Some quickly added panel lines. Some pretty nifty uh, blends between some shapes. You're well on your way to making something like this. Uh, just takes a little bit of planning with that initial uh, bevel to give it some supporting geometry so it knows that the uh, angles on both of those edges are supposed to come in towards a center point, and then the uh, bevel at the at the, uh, the curvature on the bridge, and then just setting the flow on the edges as they go around, and you're in good shape. I mean, obviously, there's even more that could be done here. Like, uh, yeah, basically. I should have added more curvature on these guys at the very beginning. I could just increase this up to 35 and it would probably, probably do just fine. Well, maybe not. 45? Oh, I guess prevent indirect smoothing? Oh, I know what's going on. Yeah. On the chamfer, you have to set it to from smoothing, unsmooth edges. Then it would just work. I went through a little bit more effort there than was actually required. So, yeah, and things like this edge right here, it's just too close, you just weld it in, and then the shading just fixes itself. There you go. Nice smooth blend between those two objects with some panel lines. Hope that was educational. Bye, guys.